Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14 read as follows, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought neither by the blood of Jesus Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Would you pray with me just for a moment, Father? This is your son. I stand as a willing vessel to accomplish your will. Use me now, Lord, in the way that you see fit, that your people might be edified and your name might be glorified. We commit the time to you and consecrate in your hands. Have your way now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Get quickly into this, this text. I want to make sure we get out of here on time. Allow everybody to, to get home and get their rest for uh, tomorrow. Or some it's a holiday, or some it's another work day. I'd like to be respectful of the time that you've given. It's been a long day for many of us. Uh, and we thank God for His grace that's keeping us even now. The Apostle Paul writes this first of his prison epistles to the saints at Ephesus, those who are faithful in Christ Jesus. He writes to them, uh, these Gentiles and Jews, uh, specifically addressing now the Gentiles who were once separated and alienated from God, first of all, but uh, from also one another. Uh, and ultimately because of sin. Uh, but what the Apostle Paul kind of wants to bring together is that, they, that that's no longer necessary. That is no longer true. Um, because of sin, they had different gods. They had different religious uh, beliefs. They had different uh, views. They had different worship times, different worship days, different worship ways. Uh, and even though we are actually referring to Jews and Gentiles, it may not sound a whole lot different from us. This, this, this text begins in verse 13 with two very uh, pronounced words, but man. There was a time when you were separated. There was a time when you uh, uh, didn't worship together. There was a time that you didn't even know the same God, but man. There is a place and a point in time called man. There is a place and a point in time called now. And in that time called now, we have but two choices. You can either redeem it or you can lose it. Uh, right now. Um, for, for the saints here in Ephesus, for those of us here gathered for the Maryland Delaware Convention, there is a time called now, and we also have the same choice. We can either redeem it or we can lose it. As I looked at this particular passage and I thought along these lines, I was reminded of Dr. Martin Luther King who spoke in the same vein, and it's understanding that this time called now is essential. This time called now is precious. This time called now needs to be redeemed. And I just want to uh, read just a few verses, uh, a few lines from uh, his 1963 speech on Washington, where he said, as it relates to the same subject matter, it relates to the same idea. He says, we have also come to this humble spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of man. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or taking the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promise of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to uh, the sunlit paths of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. In other words, Dr. Martin Luther King says, we 
should take the choice of redeeming the time. I want to talk to you this evening just for a little bit, a little time, not long, and get out your way. I'm hit with it, get out of your way. But I want to talk to you from the subject matter, but now. But now. Paul says to his audience and to us, there was ultimately a time that, that we had a reason to be separated. We, we had reasons and right. We had, we had feelings and emotions. We had history and we had problems. We had, we had all kinds of records and all kinds of laws and we had a reason to be separated. But now, yeah. see, 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 now, now is, is, is the redeemed time. Now is the time that we've got to do something with what we have because if we fail to do something with the but now, we will, we will lose that time and it will be gone into the quicksands of eternity. But now, uh, 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 Dr. Lee, there was a time when even in the Maryland Delaware Convention, things weren't as they are. But now, we've got, we got an opportunity to change that. We've got an opportunity to move beyond that. In fact, as a result of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all that he has done, we, we don't have to do the things that we've been doing. This letter was written many years ago, but still here we are, struggling with the same issues. And Paul says, but now, you once were separated, you once were alienated, but now. You're not, you're not, you're not. And so, so uh, Paul says, I, I, I really, really want to get a lot more, but I'm just going to go on in. But we can hear it, Paul says. Paul says he is our uh, peace. He is our, our peace. He says there uh, in verse 13, but now Jesus Christ, now in Jesus Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. And he goes on in verse 14, he says, he himself is our peace. Uh, he is our peace. He is the means by which we no longer need to be separated. He is the means by which we now have sin because of our sin. Uh, uh, there was a time when because of sin, because of sin did what it did, and because of sin it caused us to look at each other and, and discriminate with one another or between one another as it relates to the color of our skin or the, the culture that we had or the community that we came from or the commonalities we did or didn't have. And, and we allowed that to fuel the odds that separated us. But the, but the, but the, but the, but the idea here that we have to hit on is but now. 